So what happens if it actually grabbed you? Did it caught you? Oh. On the ground, on the ground. Thank you very much, sir. This can leave bruises, so I'll maybe start slow and gentle. Unfortunately, Mr. Bryant may have a bruise or two there. <laughs> As he grabs and he's locked to you now, there's a connection to you. You're going to use that to your advantage. Why take it off if you can use this? Because he really can't hurt me with this hand. That hand, usually it's a grab and punch or something else is coming. So before that happens, you could certainly distract him with this, blah, 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 whatever. And what you're doing again is that same idea of rolling. By pressing in against the bone and rolling up, you're covering a much larger area of nerve tissue, so you sensitize a larger area, and it gets their brain involved in a bigger way. When you do this, really think about closing off your armpits, elbows against the body, so this is a nice, firm movement. So you're not doing something like this. It's a lock in and towards you, tight against your body. But again, he's coming towards me, so I need down, down, down. At the end, you can turn, get ready for a pin or something like this, and anywhere along that arm, or even the back of the hand, will be very effective. So you don't have to be really accurate for where you put it. Just over top, lock in, step back, finish. Very simple, very, very simple. There you go. Question? Yeah. Is the twist at the back something necessary? For no, not at all. It just sets up the pin. So you walk back, they're on the ground. What do you do with them now? Are you going to fillet them and eat them later? I don't know. Because <laughs> you caught them, what are you going to do with them now? Throw them back. So, you may throw back. It's too small. No, you're not. I'm just joking. The idea being that, that the turn at the end is getting you ready to be now over top for the finish, whatever that may be. That's all. How does it get pulling instead of pushing? Because they're pushing, you're going towards you, right? As they're pulling, you can take it towards them? Sure. So if he started and he pulled inwards, I'll start like this. Guaranteed he'll have no choice. He'll be neutral now. He won't want to go forwards or backwards. He just wanted to stop. You. I turn always as a habit to look at was what if, if he grabs, I'm gonna come from under and then over and lock. The difference here is I now let go, let go, let go. He can't. <laughs> and then down. And what I've done is made a triangle. You let go now. Here. A kind of handcuff. All you gotta do is pick one of your hands and bring it, swing it across your body. So it's on the right side, swing it to the left over top, grab, and bring it. This is anatomically the strongest position for the human arm. We spent our first nine months growing. How, do I, how can I get out of this? So the simplest way is always bring the baton to the outside, over the arm, and down. Outside, over, down, you will come free. This is the same with the hand. For example, if you were to grab your hand and you wanted to get free, just bring it outside, over, and down. You'll get free every time. He grabs, outside, over, down. What if he grabs? Baton, outside, over, down. Now, if they were to grab, of course, we know that they're likely going to continue with something, so we do want to follow up. But just to start, if you can see how simple this is, it doesn't matter if you grab with his other hand, for example. This is the outside of the arm. This is the inside of the arm, one closest to the body. Always outside, over, press, down. You can watch what happens. Do it slowly. It puts all the pressure against his hand, and what holds this together is his ability to keep his fingers tight against his hand. Uh, the palm of his hand. So as I begin to press, it opens up his hand and it pops out between the fingers and the thumb. Very, very simple, basic physics. So it's very easy to get out, even when they're a lot stronger than you. And if they are really strong, put a lot of weight on it, just make the movement bigger. He will get out. And it doesn't matter whether he grabs with right hand, left hand, if he grabs uh, straight on, grab the other way. Yeah, he grabs like this. It, might get, it makes no difference. The idea is, still, I just want to make this outside over, it'll come down. Okay, so if you grab this way, or this way, right or left, just think outside, over, down, you'll be free. Quick little beginning, and then we'll show a control of that. Question? Okay. So if you were to grab it, I want to contain and control them. I'm going to do the same kind of concept, but I'm not going to let them let go. And I can actually pin right here. This is a... You got you. Like you guy, you kill. It's this technique. But it's done with the baton, which makes it very much more painful for most people. You can actually lock, it's long enough, lock and pick them up, and you still have this lock. For us, we're not going to focus on that today. Just the pin itself. You are pressing downwards. 
while you've got their fingers. And you don't need a lot of fingers. One or two fingers, plenty to the ground. And if you continue to press, you'll have a pin. Just the fingertips of the first two is enough, but if you can, try to get as many fingers as you can. No more than the middle of the finger down. Don't try to grab their whole hand. It's too big, too thick. Just catch a few of their fingers. That's all you need. Question. Again, outside over, holding their fingers down. And then you can step back, control as you like. No question? Okay. Well, oh, this oh, oh. And someone tried to kick. The idea is that you're going outside, over, and catch. That's the same kind of move we had before. Just a little movement can get him to uh, fall to the ground, step over, and I now have an ice pen. It's a bit long. But all you're doing is basically sweeping across, which is kind of a block. You do it in karate, you're blocking towards a kick. Same thing here, just come up underneath. Hello, it's mine anyway. I'm gonna hold it, hug it, and then you just move, get them to lose balance, step over, and I'll turn them face down, all their tools and weapons point downwards, and again, you have this nice tight lock. The thing you were doing on your forearm, you're able to do on their shin. For many people, the shin seems to be more painful than their arm. So be gentle, be careful. Luke is gonna fall. So you wanna make sure that the individual has places to fall that can be someone else. And indeed, this can certainly work if you went inside. So if you kick with the other foot, you can certainly do it this way. The problem is you're closer to that other hand. Not that you rather be beaten out if he turns in. But if you catch and lock, you're already in the pin position, even right up to the Achilles at the back of the heel. So the concept here is to hug it tight against you and add that, that little roll. And if you do, you'll have a very, for most people, you have a very controlling pin. Any questions? Yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> so he's no, no. so outside, in. So I'm doing just think about this as like a karate style movement. If he's gonna kick, you had a baton around the shin or the side of the leg as you do this. The focus here isn't really the strike. The focus is the control. Because they're tough guys. Kickboxes and stuff, they often deaden their shin. Do this, they're like, that's supposed to hurt? Meanwhile, they're punching, kicking, doing other things to you. Not so good. So I want to contain. I want to control. So as he kicks, it's underneath, over top. Underneath, over top. And then turn over. By stepping over their body this way, it turns them to the ground. And I can still make a nice straight pin. And if I continue to turn, you can step on their leg, hold them in place when someone's searching, or they can't go anywhere, they can't move, and you get good control. <laughs> Question? All right, let's try. Oh, oh, he can't. Now, if he's, people say, well, let me try, and they're you know, seven feet tall, 400 pounds, and they stand over top of you doing this. Well, okay, then you move to one side, get them off balance. And same thing, just bring it up, easy to escape, outside over or inside up. The advantage of the inside movement is, if you bring your hand down, you now have control of them. Up, double power. I used to teach this always, uh, pretend you're from California. I'm so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> just do that. Just do that. <laughs> really, you grab the two hands, just do that. Oh, I'm so beautiful. <laughs> I watch people do this sometimes, they go, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no. You got something in your hair. You got a little bug, a piece of leaf in your hair. Where, where here? Ah. It's so simple, and you'll get out. But the advantage, of course, if you've got a tool, and again, this could be a pen, it could be a few items, someone had a, uh, a shot on a kubelton, anything like that. It's great. Because then, once you do, you now can grab and control his wrist. This is a type of police arrest technique you can take down. But what we're going to practice today, actually, is this idea. And then our pin is going to bring the hand to the front. We're going to press. Actually, I'm going to drop down and make it more simple so you can see. So the pin is this here. It's the hold in place to begin where it originally was a handcuffing position. It was, I was originally taught this way, but it's a way to kill them. We have a Mr. Uh, uh, Chauvin, I believe, that's in prison now. Yeah. Yeah. Floyd, because he was on his body, back, neck, lungs. We want to stay away from that. So we're going to hold the shoulder. And just hold in. It's a pin position. Hold in place. Not to be brutally painful or to damage or injure them. So how do we do that? It's simple. 
Basically, you need to control their hand, go under their arm, press their shoulder. Think like that. To help you bring this across, get under their arm. I'm gonna bring him towards me, and I'm gonna to go towards him, but I need to get under the arm. Because when I do, I now have a Ikajo style, or first control, Ikyo style of control. And there's so many advantages. You can kneel to help hold this pin. You can bring it across and put two hands. If you let go here, you can use your, your uh, thigh to hold as you continue the pin. Just be mindful that your partner has limitations. 